Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Well, sisigundahan ko yung unang katanungan ni Congressman Remulia at saka ni Congressman Marcoleta yung tungkol dun sa kung bakit bumababa yung nagiging qualifications ng ating mga SVP. So, gusto kong tanungin, uh, I don't know kung si SVP Mas ang pwedeng sumagot sa akin, Mr. Chair. Tama ba itong informasyon na nakarating sa akin na yung EVP and COO position iba yung requirements ng December 2019 at iba yung naging requirements ng February 2020 nung na-appoint si Mr. Arnel De Jesus? be responding. Mr. Chair, SVP Dennis Mas of Management Services Sector. SVP uh, Dennis Mas recognized. Don ma'am, ay hindi ko narinig. <laughs> Yung regarding... Okay. I'll repeat the question. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. It ma has reached my office na yung requirement for EVP and COO iba nung December 2019 at na iba nung February 2020 nung na-appoint si Mr. Arnel De Jesus. Oh, sige ma'am, yung, yung, uh, yung ano na yan, yung issue na yan ay covered ng uh, Civil Service uh, Resolution 2000282. No? Uh, ang President ng PhilHealth, as, uh, manifest, as after niya manifest sa PhilHealth Board, ay nag-request sa adjustment sa qualification standards ng Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer sa Lagrade 29 position ng PhilHealth. Sa kanyang letter, ni President Ricardo Morales dated September 11, 2011. It says that the Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, is the second highest position in the corporation. It is a career position tasked to oversee the development and implementation of policies and procedures on finance, operations, administrative, and other support services. However, with the implementation of UHC and approval of its IRR, The corporation will embark on its new task on health financing and ensuring financial viability through proper handling of funds coming from the different sources such as sins tax, remittance of members, funds from PAGCOR and PCSO. With this uh, upcoming task for PhilHealth implementing UHC, uh, the President of PhilHealth uh, as uh, uh, sinulat niya sa Civil Service Commission is requesting for some changes in the qualification standards of the EVP position so that he can hire an expert in finance and fund management who possesses the qualifications needed for the position. So, uh, sa rules naman ng CSC na kalagay sa omnibus rules on appointment and other human resource actions, ang nakalagay dito, agencies are always encouraged to set specific or higher standards for their positions, including the required competencies. These standards will be submitted to the Commission for approval, and once approved, the agencies shall uniformly and consistently adopt this in the selection and appointment of employees. The approved qualification standards shall be adopted by the Civil Service Commission in the attestation of appointments of the agency concerned. So after okay. uh, uh, ma-deliberate ng Civil Service Commission in Bank, no, na dito yung pirma ni Chairman uh, Bala sa Commissioner Attorney Aileen Dizada, ang naging desisyon nila, it says here dito sa resolution, wherefore the Commission resolves approved amendment of the qualification standards for the EVP position of PhilHealth. So yung, yung dati, nandoon pa rin naman. Naging, uh, top, pero ang pagkakaiba, Binigyan nila ng alternative. First, dito sa education, naging bachelor's degree in accountancy. Sa experience naman, five years of supervisory experience. Sa training, same, 120 hours of supervisory management training, learning and development intervention. And instead of a career service professional, ginawa nilang RA-1080, CPA. So, ito po ang pag-amend ng kanyang qualification standards which encourage naman na talaga ng Civil Service Commission ay may approval ng Civil Service Commission no? led by yes. Chairman Bala at yes, saka BP. Commissioner. Yes, SVP din. Ang tanong ko, kailan sinulat yung letter? Uh, pardon, ma'am? Kailan sinulat yung letter? Anong date? Uh, sinulat ni General Morales ang kanyang request sa Civil Service, September 11, 2019. Uh, 
ang so September 11, 2019. Uh, ang, I can provide a copy mamamaya. Yes. Yung, uh, mm -hmm. yung kanyang ano, yung date ng uh, commission kung kailan ito prenulgate. Uh, promulgation, nakalagay dito February 11, 2020. Kaya nung pinapish na, ito... Kailan na-appoint si Mr. Arnel De Jesus? After na nito, ma'am. Precisely. Na. So, uh, parang para, ginawa natin, we suit the requirements of Mr. De Jesus para lamang siya ang ma-appoint na COO. Kasi ah, parang may... biglang all of a sudden, di-denowngrade natin. Because hindi, ang sabi mo sa akin, dapat... Yung sabi nga sa mo, dapat in-upgrade natin yung qualification standards. Pero ang tingin ko kasi dito, tinanggal nyo yung civil service eligibility, tapos ginawa nyo na lang master's degree para makapasok sa posisyon. Um, kasi parang very specific and very timely eh. Meron tayong gustong ipasok, uh, pero September, tapos all of a sudden, February, napalitan na kaagad ng civil service commission. Uh, as of December 2019, parehas pa rin ang eligibility requirements ng civil service. Tapos bigla-bigla, February 2020, na-downgrade yung qualification, and then all of a sudden, Mr. Arnel De Jesus was appointed. So I just cannot help but think na sinut nyo yung requirements nyo just to be able to appoint this person. Uh, Desisyon po yan, ma'am, ng President and CEO ng PhilHealth at saka yan naman ay na-manifest sa board meeting ng uh, PhilHealth Board of Directors. Well, so, I'm just trying to point that out, Mr. Chair and to our colleagues, na I don't know why we are downgrading the requirements of our officers of the very, you know, of a corporation that a lot of people are are relying heavily on. Um, number two, FDP ma. Totoo ba na napalitan din yung executive and managerial offices ginawang non-station specific? Ginawang non-station specific. Kaya maraming kahit maliit lamang ang experience or mababa ang experience ay nailagay sila sa SVP position. Ay, yan yung mga qualification standards po natin, uh, Your Honor. Uh, nung araw pa po yan, hindi yan talaga napalitan. So sa mga Executive Managerial Officers uh, ng Corporation, standard talaga yun, 120 hours of training in management supervision, 5 years of experience in management and supervision, na kaya nga, kaya nga dito, sa ginawa dito sa EVP, in-adjust na ng, uh, ng civil service upon the request of the President and CEO of PhilHealth. So, yan ho yung uh, pinapublish sa qualification standards ng mga position sa PhilHealth at uh, as far as I can recall, wala naman hong appointment. No, hindi mo po na naiintindihan, FDP Dennis. Um, yung sa executive position, ginawa yung non-specific, non-station specific. Ayan uh, pa ibig yung... Sabihin, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi ako abogado, pwede akong maging FDP for legal kasi ginawa yung non-station specific ang requirement para sa mga FDP or executive position. Is that correct? Uh, Your Honor, uh, parang 2 years and 8 uh, months pa lang ako pero yung dinatnan ko, yan na yung mga qualification standards na nakaset. So, ga ganun na ho yun. yun. Kanina nag-emanate para dapat palitan ito? Kasi ikaw, 2 years ka na dyan. Sa tingin mo, tama na maglalagay tayo ng isang taong walang experience dun sa posisyon na kailangan niyang maging SDP? Kaya nga, kaya yung honors ng civil service, ini-encourage talaga ni update at saka maging specific sa mga competencies na required ng isang position. Kaya dito sa Executive Vice President and CEO, uh, in-update nila, no? Nag-request ang um, uh, management ng amendment. Sorry, I, I beg to disagree. That's not updating. Di naman grade nyo, tinanggal nyo lang yung civil service eligibility. That's the only thing you remove from there. Dinagdag nyo lang na or master's degree, at tinanggal nyo yung civil service eligibility. Enough na yung CPA. Kaya na-appoint si Mr. Arnel De Jesus. I'm just saying, hindi nyo siya in-upgrade. Binawasan ninyo ng requirement. Actually, at binagdagan nyo, binagdagan nyo ng qualification to suit the need. Anyway, I'm just stating out a point. And sana, ayusin nyo na itong non-station specific because with this ruling, Ako, bilang non-lawyer, can be SDP of legal because of five years managerial experience. Hmm. And that is something that you have to correct. Kaya punta ako kay yes, yes. Acting, F acting SDP actually. Susundan ko yung yes. tanong ni Congressman, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, to Ma'am Nerisa Santiago, are you a licensed actuarian? 
uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the the Actual Society of the Philippines uh, doesn't issue po licenses. Uh, we are conferred uh, the associate and the fellow uh, titles of uh, actuaries po. Are you a member of it? Yes, ma'am. Pag anong pangalan, ang, anong pangalan mo ang nandoon sa society? Kasi pag sinesearch ko yung pangalan mo, nakakalag nakalagay item na found. Uh, bali, ano po, sa ngayon po, hindi po ako nakaka-attend ng na, uh, mga meetings. Uh, yung pong mga uh, social sa government po kasi hindi naman kami required to attend the meeting. So, hindi po ako nakaka-attend. Ang tanong po, are you a member of the society as you are claiming? Because when I search your name, wala ang pangalan mo sa society na sinasabi mong miyembro ka. Uh, hindi lang po ako currently active member. So, ikaw ang aktwarya ng PhilHealth na pinakamalaking GOCC natin na malaking bahagi ay nagdidepende sa'yo. Hindi ka licensed aktwarya. Kasi, ang alam ko yung dati may license. Hindi, may, meron tayong dating um, aktwarya ng PhilHealth na license. Is it that right? Um, na conferred po ako ng associate, uh, being an associate actuary po. Hindi, bakit mo sinasabing walang license actuarial? Uh, hindi po kasi license yung binibigay ng Actuarial Society of the Philippines. Hindi po kasi kami under sa uh, PRC. But you are not a member now of the society. Uh, hindi, hindi po ako currently active member. So let us make that clear kasi when I search you, hindi ka naman membro ng, uh, ng society na sinasabi mong membro ka as justification for the lack of your license. So ganun ba yun? Pagka hindi ka active, tatanggalin ka na na kinonfer ka ng actuarial status? Uh, Is hindi, that how it goes? Kasi hindi, syempre kung ikaw ay kinonfer, whether you attend or not, ikaw ay forever dapat conferred by that. Um... We can, ano po, we can get a certification from the Actuarial Society of the Philippines of yung um, confirmant po ng ano, pagiging associate actuary ko po. So, yun ang gusto ko tanungin kay FDP Mas. Hindi ba sa tingin mo dapat license actuarial ang nilalagay natin bilang SVP ng PhilHealth? Ma'am, may ganong movement talaga sa civil service at saka yung PhilHealth. Kaya ngayon, ang uh, trust natin dito ay competency-based Human Resource Management System. Ibig sabihin, yung mga observations nyo kanina na doon sa position ng legal, ay pwede ko natin i-amend yan later and then i-prescribe. Basta actuary, pwede naman natin maging, maging ano, requirement para maging specific na talaga siya sa mga positions. No? So, dapat we are, naman. Kaya It's sa ngayon... It's about time that we change this one. Na dapat hindi sa non-station specific. We have yes. to be very specific on yes. this one. Uh, we, we are towards that, ma'am. Kaya nga ano, yun, nagsimula na kami magkaroon ng competency-based job descriptions. So, nireview na namin yung mga job descriptions ng mga offices kung saan doon manggagaling rin kung ano yung mga tamang uh, qualification standards. Hindi na yung generic. Kasi yung ina-adapt ng PhilHealth to kasi generic eh. Kaya kung, kung kulang ka talaga sa mga in-expect ng ng iba, ng qualification, makakwalify ka talaga. Kaya kailangan natin i-update ang uh, qualification standards or, or, or ano, yung ina-adopt ng field. So, so, we are so adopting Dennis, yung competency-based... DP Dennis, SDP Dennis, so siguro naman, diba? Kung ganun yung pabilis na gawa, na palitan, or na-convince nyo kaagad ang CSC, ang galing nyo, lakas nyo sa CSC, ang galing nyo silang napapa-action. Kung mabilis nyo napa-actionan, yung EDP at COO, at sa loob lamang ng tatlong buwan, na palitan niyang rules ng CSC, Siguro naman, anong araw ngayon, Agosto? Baka naman pwede, next month, or next, next month, mapalitan nyo na rin yung non-station specific. Kasi mukhang malakas kayo sa CSC. Isang request nila, ang bilis, napapalitan na kaagad ang eligibility requirement. So nakita na natin ngayon, kailangan palitan ang eligibility requirement pagdating dito sa mga SDPs na maging specific. So sana naman, pagtapos ito, pag uwi mo sa opisina, yes. ay i-request nyo na rin sana sa ICSC at sabihin nyo kung gano'n nila kabilis pinalitan yung requirement sa EVP at COO, sana mas mabilis pa nilang palitan ng requirement para hindi maging non-station specific. No. Can I count on you on that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Kaya nga, ano, meron na kaming mga positions, 153 of them, 
na ano na talaga competency based. So later ang mga qualification standards niya papalitan na rin namin hindi na yung generic lang para maging specific talaga sa profession no. But SVP Kung, permit kailangan unahin natin yung SVP kasi yes, sila yung mga head eh. We uh, get guidance from them, di ba? Yes, so yes. dapat doon kayo pinakamahigpit and it bothers me but the requirement for attorney 4 and attorney 6 is even stricter than the SVP for, for, for legal. Isipin mo, attorney 4, 2 years legal experience. Attorney 6, 5 years legal experience. Salary is 26. Ang SVP for legal, salary is 28. No legal experience needed, just 5 years managerial experience. I fully agree, ma'am. I fully agree. Kaya nga ang okay, ating job, job description, competency-based na. Okay, so sana pag-uwi mo, isulat mo na yan. Sabi mo na sa presidente o kung sinong in charge to write a letter to CSC. And yes. I will expect CSC, siguro Mr. Chair, invite natin yung CSC and let's get a commitment from them to change this act up. Kung nagawa nilang mabilis, Mr. Chair, na palitan ng requirements ng COO at CBP, I hope they can change this also as soon as possible. Tama can I request that, Mr. Chair, next hearing, patawag natin yung CSC? Tatama yes, uh, we will do that, uh, Honorable uh, BH. Honorable uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Congresswoman BH, last, yes, but, uh, last point? Uh, last, last two questions, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, gusto ko lang tanongin, nagtataka lang ako, bakit parang ang daming na-appoint, parang ang lalakas nila, uh, they can be appointed even though yung qualifications nila, hindi. Uh, so I'd like to ask Attorney Joto Del Rosario, Kanina, he was mentioning na he feels that he's not qualified or kung aalisin nga siya dyan or papalitan niya yung posisyon niya, mas gugustuhin niya. So can I ask, bakit sa tingin niya na-appoint siya? Kung sa tingin niya ay kulang siya sa experience or hindi naman niya gusto yung posisyon, bakit siya na-appoint? Ah, Ma'am, yung discuss ko lang no, yung proseso sa pag-apply sa PDA. Kung muna mag-signify ka ng application mo, i- I, I, so, nag-signify siya ng intention niya. Kasi sabi niya kanina, kung tatanggalin nga po ako dito, eh, okay lang po sa akin Board dahil of... hindi po bagay sa akin yung trabaho. Y y uh, Madam Congressman, ang nagpili kay Mr. Dolonsario ay Board of Directors ng PhilHealth. Sa PhilHealth yeah, kasi... Pero sabi mo kasi... So, yeah, I'm asking actually Atty. Jojo Dolonsario. Is he around Atty. Jojo Dolonsario? Ah, si Jojo. Sige. Is Attorney Jojo Del Rosario around? Attorney Del Rosario? Wala ba si Attorney Jojo Del Rosario? Uh, Honorable uh, Congressman Bacher D., Nawala daw po. Nawala. So, um, ko, Mr. Chair, mamaya pag bumalik siya, kasi I just really have one important question that I should ask him. So, sana kung may time, uh, matanong ko lang po siya. It's just one question that I would like to clarify with him uh, as to regards to his appointment. So, okay lang po mamaya pag bumalik siya, Mr. Chair? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Anyway, my last point lang. Gusto ko lang pong tanongin nito. I, I, I'd move away from that. But I expect the commitment of SDP Dennis Mas to make sure to prepare the letter already. And sana for the next hearing, makita namin yung sulat mo address to that. Mr. Chair, my last point that I want to, to raise is the budget for COVID testing. Um, I'd like to know how much is the total budget of Philip for COVID testing that was set aside? SVP or uh, Mr. Chair, our actually will answer for that. The actual cost for COVID testing, kung magkano daw po? Actual budget, I'm sorry, for COVID testing. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding the, the costing po, uh, we have budgeted, we, are, we calculated uh, for the 10 million tests, that uh, DOH uh, uh, purchased uh, at 2,077 per tests. So that's about 20.7 uh, billion. 
uh, in terms of uh, payment. And then in, aside from the 10 million tests that uh, DOH will be purchasing, uh, we budgeted about 250,000 for the PRC. Uh, that's about 900 million. And another 250,000 which is paid outside of PRC and uh, the 10 million tests that DOH will purchase. So about 22 billion, ma'am, uh, in terms of COVID test pack, uh, budget. Okay, 22 billion. Since I'm at 22 billion, is that half of it, almost half of it, is the Philippine Red Cross, is that correct? And then half is para kanino? Uh, yung pong sa, <clears throat> sa PRC po kasi, uh, I think uh, what we have uh, approved in, in the, well, we, the, we have discussed during the board, is about 900 million uh, budget for PRC. That's at 3,500. So, mga 250,000 plus uh, tests po yun. Okay. So, saan mapupunta? Testing of who yung ibang balance? Kung meron tayong 22 billion, sino yung itetest natin? Outside uh, of... Yung pong sa, uh, ano, naka-define po sa DOH protocol, yung pong uh, pwedeng bayaran ng PhilHealth in terms of COVID tests. Kaya na, sino-sino yun? Um, naka, initially po, yung pong mga, um, yung mga na-tests, na, yung mga, well, I think naka-define. I mean, uh, frontliners, employees, sila members, free breba to sa ating mga ano. Yun ang gusto ko malaman. Kanino? Kanino siya ina-allocate? Kasi wala pa ako naririnig na naka-avail ng libreng telehealth test. Kaya gusto ko malaman, para kanino, who can avail of this? Um, may I refer you to Doc Ish uh, regarding dun sa kung sino okay, po ang please. pwedeng maka-avail? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Honorable Herrera, if it's okay, last uh, reply of the, uh, Doc uh, Pargas. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes, Chair, I'd like to be clarified because I don't understand saan napunta yung pera for COVID testing because I haven't heard of anyone who got a free test na care of still health. Yes, Except Mr. for those na Philippine Red Cross. So I want to get answers to that one. And I also want to follow up regarding yung sinasabi ko na ano ang guidelines para sa mga empleyado ng mga private companies na sinasabing sales ang sasagot, kasama na ba to dito? We, we need clarifications from that one kasi, Mr. Chair, hanggang ngayon wala pa akong naririnig na sinagot ng sales yung kanilang COVID-19. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes po. Uh, we have adopted the uh, Department Memorandum of the DOH. Uh, patatlo na po siyang expansion and the most current is uh, Department Order 258A na kung saan meron pong subgroups A to letter J na nakalista po doon kung sino yung mga covered under the expanded testing. Uh, sa ngayon, yung mga nauna po would be of course those who are symptomatic patients, those who are, have uh, close contact, tapos na-expand na po siya sa ngayon including po yung mga nakasulat ngayon po na uh, as, as, as part of those, yun pong mga barbers, kasama po yung as we open the economy, meron pong mga yes, identified okay. doon. Now, my question is, how will they avail of this? Has somebody actually availed of this? Because like I said, wala pa kung nakitang case na sinagot ng PhilHealth. Uh, so far... Yung mga nag-COVID positive, ha? So far so, po... Pa test per se. Uh, so far po, Madam Chair, other, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Congresswoman, other than those uh, coming from the PRC, meron po kaming mga cl uh, claims filed so far. Ito po ay as of uh, August 3. Meron na po kaming nabayaran pagdating po sa SARS-CoV testing na around 11 million. And so, sino? Sino ang binayaran nyo? The patients or the testing facility? Facilities, ma'am. So be accredited facilities na kayo because the last time I was asking you, do you have accredited facilities outside of PRC? You told me you don't know. I, ma'am, hindi po. I, I actually said we have around 105 already na accredited laboratories kasama po dun ang PRC. The accredited so, testing laboratories po 
could either be hospital-based or standalone laboratories po. Now, question ko. Uh, Congressman uh, B.H. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chera, kasi gusto ko lang linawin to eh. You said before, no copay. So, yung 100 plus na to, ibig sabihin hindi sila naniningil more than the price that is set by PhilHealth? Dapat po, Madam Chair, as per our policy. So, wala pa yata ako naririnig na may murang PCR test na less than 4,000 pesos. So, kung may may claim na 11 million sa inyo, paano niyo sila magbabayaran? Eh, para mayroong nilalabas na pera pa rin yata ang isang individual. Can you uh, submit to this office na lang, Mr. Chair, para I, I know that yes, I can't. Yes, Madam Chair. Can you submit to this office? hundred plus accredited institutions and how much ang sinicharge nila. Kasi yes, Mr. kung ito ay binibayaran naman pala ng PhilHealth, bakit sabi nyo dapat no copay? Yes, Pero Mr. I don't know of any testing facility na mas mura sa 3,500. And I think you know that. So kung may, so nabayaran nyo na yung 11 billion? Ah, uh, Mr. Chair, Ma'am, pakiulit lang po. Nabayaran nyo na yung 11 billion claim? 11 million po. 11 million. Ah, 11 million. Yes po. Nabayaran nyo na to? Yes po. That's, those are claims paid for around uh, 2,181 na nasa amin. Meron po kaming on process na 9,704. Uh, that's around 62 million. That This is a data po uh, as of August 3. So, can you submit to us kung sino na yung mga nabayaran nyo para makita ko kung sino testing facilities na mura palang maningil? Yes, Mr. Chair. And also, Mr. Chair, so that, that, that means marami pa tayong pondo na natitira for COVID testing. Kung ang nagastos nyo pa lamang ay 11 million, tapos sa Philippine Red Cross is 900 million, so you still have a lot of budget. How much is left for COVID testing? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, as said by our actuary we have around uh, 22 billion uh, but that of course includes ma'am yun pong uh, plano ng gobyerno para dun po sa 10 million testing na uh, bibilhin ng Department of Health at i donate po so sa ngayon po yan po yung uh, uh, that will also cover yung expanded testing na ngayon ay uh, nadudun po sa nakasulat do sa uh, Department Order ng Department of Health 258. Okay, can you give us a copy of that? Kasama yes, na kaya doon yung employees ng private offices na sinama sa Department Order Circular? Um, ma Madam Chair, meron pong mga identified na po doon. Uh, meron pong uh, kasama doon sa mga uh, tourist area. As we open po yung mga tourist spot, may mga identif identified po na mga lugar. And Gaya, meron po mga establishments. Na yung in-identify doon sa, sa circular ng DOLE and DPI na mandated testing? I, I, um, I think so, Madam Chair. But we'll have to check um, po. Next I'll... time, next time please, ayoko nang I think so. A lot of people are listening and a lot of people are eagerly awaiting dahil marami ang may kailangan ng test. Hindi sila nagpapatest dahil napakamahal at napakagastos. Hinihintay na lang nila yung two weeks man natapos ang quarantine. Kung meron naman palang libre sa PhilHealth, hindi ko maintindihan ba't hindi alam ng taong bayan. So please give us correct information of this one so that our Filipino people na may nararamdaman, alam nila kung saan sila pupunta. Kindly publish the accredited COVID testing facilities na pwedeng maka-avail ng libre ang ating mga mamamayang may symptoms. Kasi yan ang kailangan natin. So I expect that Mr. Chair from our uh, PhilHealth na sana as soon as possible gawin nilang public lahat ng accredited facilities where our symptomatic patients can actually get the test for free. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, Madam Congresswoman, uh, we will publish and also po, it, the, those are actually posted also in our website. But yes po, we will uh, uh, ask our communications to publish. Sana naman, pati sa news, isabihin yan kasi maraming naghahanap. It's not enough that it's only in the website, ba? Ang importante dito, alam ng tao kung saan sila pumupunta. So, kindly do that. So, Mr. Chair, um, sana po mamaya, pag nandagaan po si Attorney Del Rosario, I, it's just that I really have to ask him a very important question. Is, is he still not around? 
Andiyan na po. Andiyan na po ba si uh, Attorney Del Rosario? Wala pa rin po, uh, Congresswoman uh, BH. But uh, once he's around, we'll inform you immediately. Yeah, maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. And sana po yung mga hihingi ko po ay ma-provide sa atin, especially that of FDP Dennis Mas and that of Dr. Vargas.